cognizant to the needs of our learners, parents, and teachers, the Department of Education provided us with powerful tools for productivity that will allow us to foster critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, communication and collaboration skills to be compassionate, responsible global citizens. Join us and discover new ideas in our series of professional development training program with the ICTS at Tech Unit and Microsoft Education Philippines. Together, we will equip our learners and empower our fellow educators for a dynamic future. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, at para sa guro. Sulong Edukalidad! Mabuhay! Good day to all! I am your tutor, Maj. Welcome to Itulad, a free online tutorial, an initiative of the Department of Education, Information and Communications Technology Service, Educational Technology Unit, ICTS EdTech. This program is aimed at helping and assisting learners from kindergarten, senior high school, all alive and sped learners. Aside from answering the modules, the Itulai is offering programs which you will surely look forward to. Together with our parents and teachers, the Itulai will bridge the gaps where difficulty and ease meet in learning new knowledge and skills. So, let us prepare our module, pen and paper. Ready your mind to see and hear worthwhile and interesting lessons. Let us now study and learn together with our volunteer online tutors. Tara na! All right. Good afternoon, dear learners. Happy, happy new year to all. Hello, Sean Vincent. It's nice to see you here. Princess Divine Manipun. Um, Althea Cabanizos. Bilangi. Hello, hello. John Albert Dakuritamani. Carl Lexus Harry Castillo. Riza. Hello, Riza. Shane, Graymar, Vincent. And all of you who are tuned in, Marinel also, Jewel Evangelista, good afternoon and happy, happy new year. It's our first session for the year 2022 in English 9. And today, um, once again, I am your tutor, Job, from SDO Nueva Vizcaya. And together with tutor, Ellie, from SDO Camarines Sur, we are your tutors for English 9. That's every Tuesday from 3 to 3.40 p.m. So watch us on uh, DepEd Facebook page, uh, DepEd EdTech Unit, and our YouTube channel, DepEd Educational Technology Unit. So before we start our session, um, I would request everyone to please share this tutorial session for us to be able to reach uh, our learners who are in need of assistance for their lessons, especially, of course, here in English 9. And we also invite learners from higher levels for uh, sort of a review for, for their lessons and even for lower uh, grade level students for, of course, for advanced lessons. Okay. So um, if, you if you remember, that was actually how many weeks ago? Three weeks ago, uh, your last session was with Tutor Ellie. I was not able to join you because we had um, some official businesses going on in our school, in our district. So, Sir Tutor Ellie uh, talked about adverbs, right? If you remember, these are uh, an adverb is a part of speech which modifies adjectives, verbs, and other adverbs and answers the questions when, okay, where, how, and to what extent? And then other things as you discussed were that adverbs serves as indicator of location, uh, time, and manner of how things are done. Now, here are the three aspects that you uh, discussed when it comes to adverbs. Uh, examples for adverbs of place are outside, inside, in and out, and so on. For time, then, later, today, daily, and for manner, badly, honestly, really, warmly. If you remember your session with Tutor Ellie, here's a review um, for adverbs of place. This talks about, of course, the 
location, which answers the question, where? So adverbs of place include words like above, below, down, here, inside, near, outside, there, up, and so on and so forth, okay? So for this example, Susan placed the boxes above the file cabinet. Of course, your adverb is above. And what does it uh, what does it in, uh, refer to? To the word placed. So placed where? Uh, Susan placed the boxes above. So that is the adverb of place. For the adverb of time, uh, it indicates the time, okay? So, or when something happened. So, the answer, uh, it answers the question when. So, here are examples after, always, before, and so on. So, for this example, John will attend the soccer game after he finishes his homework. So, John will attend when? After he finishes his homework. So, the adverb of time used in this example is after hello hello i see new names uh clary nell edzeline acosta jo jana eden angela claire palalay agon agonoy reyes princess athena hello welcome to english nine and of course the last uh type of adverb that you discussed with sir ellie was the adverb of manner so it tells how an action is done so um Sarah slowly walked over the rocky beach. So how did Sarah walk? She walked slowly. So again, adverbs describe verbs, adjectives, and even other adverbs. And of course, we are going to start our session with recognizing outputs uh, given by our learners from the last session. So if you remember, Tutor Ellie asked you to write a letter to someone you would want to read uh, this letter of yours. So it can be someone you have never met, someone you love, someone who have already passed away. And the criteria are, uh, uh, of course, sabi dito, um, here are certain guide questions that you can answer in writing your letter, which are um, one, what do you want to say to that person, especially this Christmas? Or two, what do you wish for this person? So let's see who uh, who made the cut for their output. So first, our first awardee is Vina Garing Navarro. So congratulations, Vina, from Ocampo National High School, SDO Camarines Sur. So let's uh, look at her letter yeah let's have a closer look there we go dear parents i am very grateful to have such a special person person like you in my life you're both loving kind generous thoughtful and fun i want to thank you for all the love special times and the happiness that you have given me you truly are wonderful Spending the holiday with you is all I need to have the best Christmas ever. So sending loving thoughts to you on this very special day. I wish you a fabulous Christmas filled with lots of love and joy. So congratulations once again, Vina Garing Navarro from Ocampo National High School, SDO Camarines Sur. What a very touching letter for her parents. And the next awardee is Riza... Anog Pua from San Mariano National High School, SDO Isabela. Congratulations once again, Riza. Very consistent, diba? Okay, let's have a closer look at her letter. There we go. First of all, sabi niya dito, I would like to wish you a, a Merry Christmas. I want you to know that even though you have passed away already, you made a great impact in my life. I'm still living your life lessons to this day. I love you so much, Grandma Maring. You will always have a special place in my heart. So uh, this time, this letter is for Ariza's grandmother who has passed away. A very, very heartwarming letter from Riza to her grandma. Once again, Riza, congratulations. Uh, if you, okay, uh, dear viewers, if you would like to uh, be recognized for your work also, Make sure to comply with the 
uh, activities that we're going to provide by the end of this lesson. And if you are not yet part of our, are included in our uh, Pambansang GC, okay, where uh, English 9 learners from, uh, of course, from around the Philippines are in, uh, doon sila nagpapas ng mga outputs nila. And there, we assess your outputs. So if again, if you would like to be recognized uh, for your work, make sure to uh, do the task given by the end of this session for us to be... Uh, oh, I see Sir Ellie here. Hello, Sir Ellie. Tutor Ellie is with us in backstage. Uh, congratulating Riza and Vina. Okay, thank you now. Riza, you're very, very welcome. And we really appreciate your uh, consistent uh, consistent participation. And of course, look, we are looking forward also to those who um, have just joined us for this session. And we are in our second quarter, week six. So last time you talked about adverbs and its types. This time we're going to talk about adjectives. We're still going to use our ADM module as reference. So here are the objectives for uh, this session. First, we are going to identify the different adjective types used in given sentences, reflect on the usage of adjectives in writing, and we're going to write a poem using the different adjective types. Okay. So here's your first task. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this trend. Uh, they say this, uh, tell me what it is without telling me what it is. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you uh, pictures. Okay, so for, and for each picture, I want you to type in the comment boxes uh, words that you can uh, use for this word to describe these words without, okay, without telling what it really is, okay? I want you to uh, uh, comment in words associated with these pictures without, okay? Again, now with emphasis, without telling me what it is, okay? So here's the first picture. Since uh, kakatapos lang naman ng Christmas season natin and New Year celebration, um, the pictures that I'm going to show you are related to those uh, events kasi nga medyo mas makaka-relate tayo kasi nakakatapos lang ng season na ito. So here's the first picture and I want you to type in the comment section words that you can use for these uh, pictures to describe it to me without telling what it is. Okay? Hello Tamika, Noheya, Betito uh, from where are you from? From Luis F. Gomez Diamandina National High School, Kabatuan East District. And Clarice K. Cabico from San Mariano National High School. Hello, Omana Joanna. Oh, Wakiko from, from Santa Lucia National High School. All right. So here we already have answers from Ashley. So sabi ni Ashley, delicious. Sabi pa ni Alegria Berandio Belga, simbang gabi. Sabi niya. What about Vina said sweet or oh, delicious? Yummy. Wow, new word. Yummy licious. Sabi ni Marites Viloria Negro. So those are great words, but yes, tasty. Sabi din Isabella. And of course, this is what we call Antao dito? Puto bumbong, right? Um, very popular Christmas cuisine. Sabi ni Graymar. Tasty. Sabi din ni Carl. Uh, Lexus Harry Castillo. What about this next picture? Uh, describe this picture to me. Uh, tell me what it is without telling me what it is. Come on. Let's see your answers. What about this picture? Tell me what it is without telling me what it is. Uh, Siyempre ako, meron akong permission na from myself <laughs> to say, uh, to tell you what it is. Of course, this is very a very famous na handa sa kahit actually kahit anong handa birthdays binyag kasal um new year celebration or christmas ba shanghai so sabi dito ni Lagraymar uh, Kiela and Alegria crunchy of oh, sabi pa na actually oh, birthday um sweet Oh, wait, baka para dun yun sa puto bumbong, right? Uh, I'm not sure if nakatikim na ako ng sweet na Shanghai. Unless, 
Ah, Shanghai pa rin ba? Pagka iba yung laman. Yeah, yummy. Yan. Very popular in birthday celebrations. Sabi ni Krisha dito, uh, Krisha may bisaya, the kind of food that's always on the table whenever there's an event. Exactly. Marites, Negros, crispy and crunchy. Of course, this is Shanghai. Okay, let's proceed to the next picture. What about this? Uh, tell me what it is without telling me what it is. What is this? Hello, Jessa Kabiko from San Mariano National High School. Janice from Echage West District, Doña Magdalena H. Gafford High School. What about this picture? Tell me what it is without telling me what it is. Hello, sir. Uh, hello, po. I'm Jovet. Ah, hello, po. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Riza. Oh, sabi ko Riza. Uh, without telling me what it is. Of course, it... Uh, okay, Krisha may Visaya sabi, it excites people. Especially kids. Uh, anyone else? Again, uh, our activity is, I want you to tell me what it is without telling me what it is. Okay, a surprise, sabi pa ni uh, Carlexus. Uh, Isabella, ha? Sabi ko din, you, you cannot tell me what it is. E what it is exactly, to be specific. Okay, every Christmas, people usually do or give to other people, sabi pa ni Graymar. Let's proceed to the fourth picture. Eto, eto. What about this? Tell me what it is without telling me what it is. So what are you going to do? Use other words that you can associate with this picture. Sige nga. O sabi, pahabol na answer ni Marites uh, Negros is surprise. <laughs> Kiela pala tao sabi niya, high blood. <laughs> high blood daw. <laughs> what else? What else? Uh, hello, Havian hey, Yangan from uh, uh, grade 9 Eucalyptus, SMNHS. I'm assuming that San Mariano National High School too. Ayan, favorite of all Filipino. Crunch. Sabi pa ni Riza. Ayan o, Riza. Oily. Althea may crispy. San Vincent, cholesterol da. <laughs> and for the last picture, what about this? Tell me what it is without telling me what it is. A pahabol na answer ni Ashley is famous in Cebu. That's right. Juicy. Sabi pa ka dun sa previous picture. What about for this last picture? Hello, Charlene Ligo from Echage West District. Uh, exciting. Crunch. Uh, crunchy. Pahabol lang yun siguro dun sa previous. Medyo delay lang yung comment section natin. But uh, sabi ni Riza, exciting. Sabi ni Sean Vincent, loud and noisy. Those are very, very good answers. So most of the things that you mentioned, okay, it may not be... Uh, exactly the the words that we're looking for, but in some way, those are related to our topic for today, which are adjectives, okay? So most of the answers that we got from those pictures, okay, I'm not saying all, okay? Most of them are adjectives, okay? And I'm sure by now you're already in grade nine, you know what adjectives are. An adjective is a part of speech that describes or modifies a noun or a pronoun. So an adverb, on the other hand, which was your topic, uh, which was your topic for from the last session, describes a verb, an adjective, and other adverbs, while an adjective describes a noun or a pronoun. So thank you still for the answers that may uh, mga pahabol from Ram Gafud, Rojan, Ashley, Kela, Graymar. Carl, there will be more activities later on. So I want you to stay tuned with, uh, on our lesson. So for, let's further discuss. An adjective describes a noun or a pronoun. So let's have this sentence, for example. We saw the extravagant fireworks in the sky during the New Year celebration. So what is the adjective used in this sentence? Okay. What is the adjective used in this sentence? We saw the extravagant fireworks in the sky during the New Year celebration. What word is the adjective? Mm -hmm. 
Very good, Krisha May Visaya and Gray Mar. The, uh, the word is extravagant. And what does extravagant describe? It's the fireworks. Very good, Ashley. Thank you very much for your answers. So, an adjective to further discuss answers, uh, answers the questions, what kind, how many, which one, and even how much. Okay, so again, an adjective answers the questions, what kind, how many, which one, and how much. So, um, let's have a short activity once again, true or false. Hello, Mam May. Thank you, Po. Uh, okay, so here's the first item. Tell me whether this statement is true or false. An adjective is a part of speech. Is that true or false? Let's see your answers. Once again, true or false, an adjective is a part of speech. That is correct. Vina Navarro, Krisha, Ashley, True. A, an adjective is a part of speech. And since you are grade 9 students, um, I would like to request if you have not memorized the parts of speech yet, I encourage you to memorize these because it will help you in your um, in your comprehension skills. Okay, Because being able to identify the part of speech um, of each word in a sentence can help you better comprehend your sentences okay so those are your noun verb adverb adjective what else pronoun um prepositions interjections yung mga yung mga parts of speech na yan those are very very important so i want you to be familiar okay of these parts of speech okay so sa mga mahilig sa english dyan dapat we know this by heart okay so, adjective is a part of speech. That is true. What about for this? Adjectives answer the questions when, where, how, and to what extent. Is this true or false? Once again, adjectives answer the questions when, where, how, and to what extent. Is that true or false? Very good, Krisha Visaya, uh, Graymar, Vina, Princess, that is false. Very good, Riza, Ashley. Okay, so that is false. Adjectives answer the question, answer the questions, what kind, how many, which one, and how much. Um, it's... Uh, it is the adverb, okay? It's an adverb that answers the question when, where, how, and to what extent, okay? So what about this last statement? An adjective describes a noun or a pronoun. Is this true or false? Oh, nako. Na, nadulas yung kamay ko sa keyboard. Yeah, so... This is true, okay? You memorize this definition. Very simple lang naman, eh, diba? It describes a noun or a pronoun. Yes, Marites, tama yung sinabi niya kanina. Yung the previous one is an adverb. And this time, this is, yan, yan yung adjective, describing a noun or a pronoun. So let's proceed to our next task, which is to describe the different parts of, uh, uh, different types of Adjectives. Excuse me. So a part of uh, adje an adjective is a part of speech that prescribes or modifies a noun or a pronoun and provides relevant information about a noun or a pronoun by answering the questions, what kind, how many, which one, and how much. Now, in order for us to deepen our knowledge about adjectives, we have to know the different types of adjectives. So for this session, we're going to talk about five different types, five basic types of adjectives, which are adjectives of quality, adjectives of quantity, numerical adjectives, proper adjectives, and demonstrative adjectives. So I'd like to just uh, say that these are not the only types of adjectives. 
but I chose these because these are more. Uh, I think I guess the most uh, the the more common types that we can discuss with the given amount of time that we have. We can. I think we can only discuss five types of adjectives. But if you would like to discuss further with a deeper lesson on adjectives, I encourage you to read and read. Okay. So here, let's talk about the first type that we uh, we need to discuss. It's the adjective of quality. Now, adjectives of quality describe the kind or quality of the noun or the pronoun that we are describing. So examples of these adjectives are the words blue, wonderful, huge, beautiful, generous, high, and so on and so forth. Actually, there are uh, but there are a lot. So I, if you would like, if you need to know more, uh, more adjectives to use in your writing later on, what you can do is, of course, to expose yourself with the language. So uh, paano ba natin expose yung sarili natin sa uh, English language? Of course, one is, first is to read. Okay, so read. Uh, uh, lots of lots and lots of uh, magazines, articles, novels, and so on. But of course, I want you also to be very careful of the quality, naman. Okay, the qual aside from adjective quality, I'm talking about the quality of the content of the things that you read. So not all of the things that we read on the internet are, how do you say, it, are accurate. Okay, so that is why it is for me. Okay. Uh, libraries or yung mga hardbound na books should, okay, it should stay relevant, okay? No, despite the technological advances that we have, um, those those books, okay, yung na mga na-publish na books, uh, it will and it should uh, stay relevant because mas ma, mas, ano, in my opinion, okay, mas maganda yung quality ng books kasi mas maraming pinagdadaanan ang books actually di ba before ma-publish so marami pang pagdadaanan na yan na pag-check kesa yung mga post lang na binabasa natin na in an instant kahit sino pwede mag-type and then they can post it on the internet and then kung i-consider agad natin siya na facts without checking the facts it's very ano very nakakaaryan minsan nakakapanloko okay so i encourage you uh, para sa mga para naman mag-widen din yung vocabularies natin First, of course, if it's to read and read a lot. And second, um, yun namang ano, um, watching, uh, yung access to multimedia, watching videos, movies uh, that are in English language, okay? And even listening to songs or even memorizing. Actually, di ba? Uh, meron yung iba na kapag natututong mag-Korean dahil nag-memorize sila ng mga Korean ano yung, pop songs. Uh, how much more with the English language? So if you want to widen your vocabularies, uh, widen the, your knowledge on adjectives, I encourage you, read, watch, listen to, um, to materials that are in the English language. Okay, here's, the, here's an example of um, a sentence where uh, there is an adjective of quality. So there was an enormous Christmas tree in the plaza. So the um, uh, adjective of quality used is the word enormous. All right. The next type is the adjective of quantity. So the adjective of quantity indicates the amount, okay? The number, okay? The amount. So say, example, much, a little, more, some, sufficient, enough, and so on and so far, so adjective of quantity indicates the amount or uh, sometimes the estimated amount, okay, of the noun or the pronoun that we are describing. So it does not provide us the exact number, but it only tells the amount of a uh, noun in relative to, in relative or whole terms. Sabi niya dito. So here's an example. We received a lot of hugs, hugs and kisses from our grandma during Christmas. So what is the adverb of quantity used in this example sentence? It's a lot, okay? And the third type is the numerical adjective. Now, these adjectives denote the number or the order, okay? So examples are one, two, three, first, second, third, and some, many, all. Here's an example. 
grandma gave ang pahaus to her 10 children. O, ba? Sana all. Ako hindi na binigyan na ang pao kasi may trabaho na daw ako eh. <laughs> I think this is like the th- uh, second or third third Christmas na wala daw na receive na gift kasi syempre kami na inugibigay. But yung mga nakareceive ng ang pao sa inyo, ba? They must, uh, you must be happy, ba? Kasi karamihan sa atin hindi na gift at basta gift na gusto. Pera na lang para mabili yung gusto pang Shopee or so on, di ba? Okay, so let me, let's go back. Anyway, um, I want you to, of course, the uh, the word, the numerical adjective used in this sentence is the word 10. Okay? Again, numerical adjectives denote the number or order 1, 2, 3, or 1st, 2nd, 3rd. Okay? And also, sabi may nakasingit dito, some, many, and all. Some of you may have noticed, bakit sir... Balik tayo, balik tayo sa adjective quantity. Meron din dyan, oh, sum. Pero dito din sa numerical adjective, meron din sum. So, and both of them kind of involves number, right? Now, uh, let's have a closer look on adjectives of quantity and numerical adjectives. So, there is actually a difference between these two types, okay? So, for example, let's have this sentence. Uh, I drank some juice and I ate some Shanghai. So sometimes the same word can be used as a quantitative adjective or a numerical adjective, okay? But what is the difference? It's based on whether the object uh, the object following the adjective is countable or uncountable. Kung ka nabibilang ba siya o hindi, okay? So, na yun? Yeah, there you go. So if it is... um. If what the adjective is referring to is a countable noun, then we use numerical, and then it is a numerical adjective. If it refers to or it describes an uncountable noun, then it is an adjective of quantity. Okay, so let's uh, let's have a deeper uh, no, discussion. Sabi dito, I drank some juice. So, so the word some is can be either an adjective of quantity or numerical adjective. What is it referring to? Dito sa first sentence, juice. Is juice a countable or uncountable uh, noun? Juice. So it is, of course, an uncountable. Okay? So therefore, it is, the word sum in this sentence is an adjective of quantity. Okay? How, how many, kung gaano karami. Okay? That is adjective of quantity. And for the second sentence, I ate some Shanghai. Pwede naman at least nabibig countable yung Shanghai. So therefore, it is a numerical adjective. Okay? Excuse me. So that is the difference between adjectives of quantity and numerical adjectives. The uh, difference is, uh, some words can either be adjectives of quantity or numerical adjectives, but uh, basing on the subject, uh, the the um, the noun we are referring to, if it's countable noun, therefore, the adjective is a numerical adjective. If it's uncountable noun, if it's an uncountable noun, it is, the adjective used is adjective of quantity. So, medyo nakakalito, pero um, I hope I was able to give you a, um, a yung parang mag- good explanation of the difference between the two. Okay? Okay, so let's proceed. We also have proper adjectives. When we say proper adjectives, these are adjectives which are formed from a proper noun. For example, the proper noun, uh, Philippines, Philippines is a proper noun. So as an adjective, we have Philippine. Okay, America is a proper noun. So as an adjective, we use American. So France, we have when we use it as an adjective, French, and for China, diba? China is a proper noun, Chinese, okay? So here's an example. The Philippine flag was sewn by Marcela Goncilio with the help of her daughter, Lorenza, and Delfina Herbosa de Natividad, who is the niece of Dr. Jose Rizal. So here in this sentence, what is the adjective used? Well, of course, it is the word Philippine. Yan. So, in this sentence, okay, so the word Philippine is used as an adjective referring to that of the 
Philippines. Okay, so since uh, from, from the proper noun Philippines, we use it as an adjective. So we have Philippine flag, referring to the flag of the Philippines. Okay, so that is for proper adjectives. And of course, like all proper nouns, they should be capitalized. Okay, so the first letter of that word should be capitalized. And here's the, am I, uh, the I lost count. This is the fifth, I think. This, yeah, this is the fifth type of adjective, which is demonstrative adjective. Okay, so these adjectives are, uh, these adjectives uh, point out towards a person or a thing. So, nagturo. Okay, demonstrate. Nagde-demonstrate. Okay, so examples, this, diba? that, he, she, it, and so on. So here's an example. I prepared these gifts for my cousins. So of course, the demonstrative adjective used in this sentence is these. Okay. So, ayan. So demonstrative from the word demonstrate, diba? Nag, uh, tinuturo. Okay. So those are demonstrative adjectives. There we go. And of course, so again, let's have uh, let's have a recap of the five adjectives, uh, five types of adjectives: the adjective of quality, adjective of quantity, numerical adjective, proper, and demonstrative adjectives. Okay. Oh, hold on. I think I am missing a slide here. Oh no, anako nawala yung ano, nawala yung activity part natin. Hold on, let me try to see if I can recover it. Uh, just for a short while. So hang on. We're going to have an activity. Well, I guess I accidentally deleted it. <laughs> anyway, um, what I was supposed to do is for, uh, I was going to show you five sentences and I'm going to ask you to identify the types of adjectives. But nonetheless, let's continue. Instead, we go on to, aside from the types of adjectives, you also need to be familiar with the three degrees of adjectives. I bet you are familiar with this. Uh, these are positive degree, uh, comparative degree, and superlative degree. So here, I want you to ready your keyboards. Uh, we're going to have an activity wherein you're going to identify the, uh, the next uh, degree of adjective that I'm going to show you. Oh, oh may konting hint na dun. Walang magbaba ka. Medyo nagpakita ng kaunti. Pero we're going to have this activity. Of course, let me first discuss. discuss. So for the positive degree, this is yung kumbaga, the base, base form of your adjective. So for example, we have this adjective, tall. Okay? So the next degree is comparative. Comparative is like the um, a, higher, a higher degree, okay? Or higher intensity of this adjective. So for tall, we have, in its comparative form is taller. And of course, as you know, superlative, ito yung pinaka. Okay? Sa Tagalog, yung pinaka. Okay? Wala nang papantay. Ganyan. Okay? Siya lang. Nag-iisa. So you have tallest. So that's the superlative degree, uh, superlative form of the, the adjective tall. There you go. Grammar, very good. Very good. Now, what about for this word? Good. What is the comparative form of the word, the adjective, good? Very good, princess. Yes, that's right. Taller, tallest. Now, what about for this word, good? What is the comparative form of this? Good. Very good, Allen Mark de Jesus. We have better, and the superlative form is Best. That is good. Very good, Graymar. You got that right. Princess also got it right. Eli Chu. Very, very good. What about for this adjective, far? Hmm. I know, far. 
Very good. Elichu Akar Lexus Vina Navarro Riza Anog. Good uh, good to see that you're still with us. Princess Divine Manipun. Si Amba mukhang sunod-sunod ah. Hindi baka hindi ko na mabanggit yung iba. Krisha Visaya Elichu Vina Graymar Farther. That is right. Allen also got that right. Farther. And of course, the relative form is farthest. Diba? Very, sa kung tutuusin, diba? Very elementary. What about, oops, nga naman, sige na nga. What about for um, the word bad? We have worse and worst. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I accidentally pressed the keyboard. And what about for the, yes, very good, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you still, Ellie Chu. What about for the word beautiful? What is the comparative form of the adjective beautiful? Let me see. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ashley, Princess, Alwyn, Carl, Lexus, Graymar. Oh, beautiful, ah. Oh, prettier, eh, iba na yon. Pretty na yung word na yon. Elichu is right. Oh, di ba? More beautiful. And superlative form is most beautiful. Well, sometimes you do you would encounter the words like um beautifuler, oh, di ba? Yung mga may, may mga uh, may mga ganun naman na, na word, di ba? Sometimes hindi naman siya wala, parang hindi naman natut namin natutunan sa school yun na ah. ganun. But sometimes people use that word and it can somehow be acceptable. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So in in what do you call that? In uh, casual conversations, that's okay. Pero for academic, remember, okay, uh, students, for academic, uh, for the academic settings or academic um, setups, okay, we have to use the correct forms, okay? So there you have it. So that is for adjective. So again, let's have a recap. Adjective is a part of speech that describes or modifies a noun or a pronoun. And of course, we discussed the five types of adjectives, which are adjectives of quality, quantity, numerical adjectives, proper adjectives, demonstrative adjectives, and the three types, uh, three degrees rather, of adjectives are positive, comparative, and superlative. So I want you to remember that. Very thank you very much, Princess. Uh, Manipon, sabi niya still watching Learn Nipon Tutor. Thank you, thank you very much for still tuning in. Now, for as we end this lesson, I want you to look at this picture. Gan. Ayan. So, um, what can you say about this picture? What can you say about this picture? What is it? What is shown in this picture? And what can you say about it? How does it look? Um, ano yung parang impression ninyo what is your impression about this picture <clears throat> hello zaira sugitan from Ichagi west district hello welcome so if you are if you have just tuned in and since it's the almost the end of the lesson you can always rewatch this episode in our facebook page um I'll make sure okay make sure na you uh, you follow this page the uh, deped tech unit page and of course, you can also su subscribe to the YouTube channel for a review of the lessons. Ayan, sabi ni Graymar, colorless daw. Sabi ni Precious. Sabi ni Riza, very appreciative pa rin si Riza, di ba? It's still wonderful. The picture has dark color daw, colorless, di ba? So, um, uh, dear learners, um, if we're going to write um, any form of writing, uh, narratives, mga, yung mga novel ganyan, if you also write poem, okay, in poetry, which was also our topic, I think that was our last topic, your last topic with me, di ba? That was uh, two sessions before the Christmas break, uh, before Kaiser Eli. If you, <clears throat> if you look at this picture, it's, sabing natin kanina, colorless, it's black and white. Diba? Um, and in fact, it's ano ba to? Ano pa sana to? Diba? Fireworks sana to, right? Imagine nanood kayo ng, diba, nung New Year. Imagine may fireworks tapos pagtingin mo walang kulay. 
Tapos, wala pang sound. Wala pang tunog, kunwari. Pag wala pang tunog na ganyan, para, will you be able to appreciate the fireworks? Or mapapatingin ka ba sa fireworks kung wala namang kulay? Wala ring tunog. No color, no sound. Will you, ano, will you be able uh, to be attracted to that fireworks display pag wala man lang katunog-tunog, wala man lang pag-pop nung, ano, mo, nung paputok, or walang kulay, I don't think it's going to be uh, eye-catching, di ba? Hindi rin siya attention-getter pag ganun. Now, when we write, and you do not use adjectives, okay? That is the same way with this picture. Very good. Yes, exactly, Prince Ablao. Sabi niya, it's boring, okay? So when you write without adjectives, it's going to be boring, okay? But with adjectives, ayan, mag lalagyan na natin ng color. Gusto ko pa nga sanang lagyan ng sound, di ba? Pero ganun na lang siguro, no? Pag pop ng ano, nung, pag may sound, it's going to get your attention and you are going to look at it or even enjoy the, what, five minutes na ano, na na fireworks display. Ako, I am a fan of watching yung mga fireworks display every year sa YouTube. Sa yung mga iba't ibang mga countries, di ba, they have different fireworks display and I really enjoy watching fireworks display. Pero, um, pero hindi ko lang ma-appreciate minsan pag syempre, pagka-personal ay yung usok, ganyan. Pero pag watching it on, the, on YouTube, ganyan, you really appreciate the fireworks display that they uh, choreograph, right? Because of the different colors that you see and even your sounds or your experience talaga, okay? Even for food, pagka walang lasa yung pagkain, ma-enjoy mo bang kumain? Well, unfortunately, for those who um, who have experience yung nagka-COVID before, um, my family for one, um, last year, uh, got infected with the COVID, um, ayan, with the virus. And isa, yung, yung kapatid ko, naalala ko, kumain siya ng... ng uh, actually, naka-quarantine na kami noon, ah. Pero kumain siya ng yam... I, I don't mean to, like, um, as, uh, mag, mag, mag doon, mag-mention ng brands, pero Champ, Champ Burger pa naman ng Chalib, di mo, sarap-sarap noon. Pagkain daw niya, walang lasa. Will you be able to appreciate it? Of course not. So that is the same way with the use of adjectives. So, dear learners, if you want to write with uh, uh with the uh, yung parang gusto ninyong with the intention of as uh, uh, getting the attention of your readers or if you want to impress your teachers in your writing or even anyone if you want to write songs okay write songs uh, write poems make sure no that you are well rounded with the use of adjectives because these are the um, are the parts of speech that bring color to what you are writing okay so that is how important adjectives are in our language, especially in communication, okay? So let's review our uh, objectives, identify the uh, different adjectives, reflect on the usage of adjectives in writing, and of course, lastly, is to write a poem using adjective, different adjective types. And that is what you are going to do for your assignment. So your assignment is to write a poem about your Christmas or New Year celebration and make sure to use different types of adjectives. Once again, please take a screenshot of this. Your assignment is to write a poem about your Christmas or New Year celebration. So I want you to make use of different types of adjectives. Your topic can be, since it's just a poem, you can write um, one or two, one, two, or three stanzas. I mean, mga quatrains, kanyan, sin, di ba? If you could remember our lessons before. Uh, you write a poem about Christmas or New Year celebration. Pwede ninyo maging topic is konwari lechon. describe niyo yung lechon sa poem ninyo. Di ba? Of course, you have to make use of adjectives. Okay, so that is your task. So you can be any topic as long as still related to your Christmas or New Year celebration. You can write even one ano lang, one stanza na poem that will be very much appreciated still. But make sure that your outputs would contain different 
types of adjectives. Hindi lang yung um, hindi lang isang adjective of quality lang. You also put in an adjective of quantity, numerical, proper adjectives, and so on. Okay? So once again, if you are not yet part of the group chat of our uh, English 9 students from all over the Philippines, I encourage you, uh, pakisabi dun sa comment section kung hindi pa kayo kasali para yung mga kaklase ninyo ay mai-add kayo doon sa group chat. Okay? Kasi doon tayo nagsasend ng mga outputs natin for you to be recognized for next week's session. Okay? So next week, we are going to look at your outputs, uh, dear learners. So you can pass immediately after this session. You can pass tomorrow um, or even basta before uh, before next week's session. Okay? And we are going to judge. We may, we may select yung mga best outputs. Um, tapos, by the end of the quarter, again, just like we did what we did for the first quarter, we're going to award learners, okay? So, um, as, we, uh, as we end, of course, we also would like to um, get feedback from you using this link. And don't forget to answer your exit assessment. And I will, uh, I will send the link of also to, your, to the group chat, okay? Para mas madali naman nating ma-access itong link na ito. Um, forgive me if uh, if you would access the link immediately right now. Baka hindi pa siya active, pero by the end of this session, I will make sure this, though, that those links are already active. So once again, happy, happy new year sa ating lahat. I hope na ano ha, uh, okay na maging okay tayong lahat this year for the year 2022. Whatever it is that you want to achieve, ano yung gusto ninyong magawa, ngayong year, uh, I hope and pray na magawa rin natin. So despite the setbacks that we had for um, sa last year natin, about year 2021, uh, let's have the attitude of ano yung, um, hopefulness sa year 2022. Huwag nating hayaan na ma-discourage tayo sa mga pangyayari around us. We focus on our goal for you students. Um, of course, um, I'm not telling you what to do diba, with your life, pero make sure diba, that you excel in everything you do, even in your academics. Okay, despite the different setups that we have, kung meron man sa inyo ang re ready ng mag face to face, or yung iba sa inyo ay modular lamang, or online learning, you do your best in everything that you do para, um, para yung future nyo would be very, very bright. Okay, so once again, I am your tutor, Job. From SDO Nueva Vizcaya, and I'm with Tutor Ellie from SDO Camarines Sur. We are your tutors for English 9. That's every Tuesday, 3 to 3.40 p.m. on Dep Ed EdTech Unit Facebook page. And also, you can watch it some uh, even our replays in our, our YouTube channel, Dep Ed Educational Technology Unit. So together with the other English uh, junior high school tutors, um, I greet you once again, a very, very a happy, uh, happy new year to all of you. So thank you very much for joining. Thank you, Riza. Thank you, Carl, Maria, Ashley. Hello, Graymar, and all of those who have joined us for today's session. Thank you very much for your participation. And I hope to see you again next week on our English 9 session. So God bless. Stay safe, everyone. Bye. Bye. Ang husay naman, natapos mo ang iyong tutorial session kasama ang iyong mahusay na itulay tutor. May bago ka bang natutuhan? I-share na yan gamit ang hashtag itulay level up. Huwag aalis ha dahil may susunod pang programa na pwede mo ring panoorin at salihan. Dahil naghihintay na ang iyong mga tutors. Happy learning dito sa itulay!